All right, so um, let's, uh, so we'll use a lot of elasticity. So let's review a couple of results that we've started here, but I think it's a good time to pause a little bit and introduce uh, a few results on elasticity so that um, we can just make sure we're all on the same page and then proceed from there. Um, so um, if we have a function uh, f of x, Um, we are going to see uh, what its elasticities mean, how we can um, derive it, as well as uh, various properties of elasticities which, has, which are derived from um, just properties of um, derivatives in general. And everywhere we are going to use uh, the Leibniz uh, notation, right? Uh, so we we'll use um, dx to uh, denote a small infinitesimal change in the variable x. We we'll use df to denote a small uh, infinitesimal change in the function f. And uh, of course, we're going to use um, the laws that applies to uh, this uh, notation and these laws are of course directly um, derived from the laws of the derivatives. Okay, um, so if we have a function f of x um, using Leibniz notation, what is uh, a marginal change in that function? Well, then we know that the f is just f prime of x dx. Okay, well. F prime of x is just the standard derivative of the function f. So a small change in x is going to lead uh, to a small change in f if we have a function f of x. So that's just any differentiable uh, function. Okay, so df is f prime of x dx. That's how this uh, the Leibniz notation works. So, you know, when you write integrals, uh, so, you know, when you write an integral with a small dx at the end of your integral, that's just a Leibniz notation, for instance. And when you write that uh, derivative, you know, you can write the derivative as f prime of x, but when you write it df dx uh, is equal to f prime of x, you know, that's just, again, Leibniz notation. Okay? Uh, and in fact, you know, if you rewrite this, you get that df over dx is just f prime of x, okay? which is um, you know, the standard way to, uh, to write uh, a derivative that, that we use sometimes. Okay? But here we're going to use the Leibniz notation, which is um, very convenient. Um, okay? uh, but you know, all of this is just, uh, it's just a way to manipulate derivatives. Okay, so we're going to study elasticities. So what is the elasticity of f with respect to f? So this elasticity, usually we write it epsilon f of x, <coughs> it's d log f d log x. That's just a definition. Okay, um, so it's d log f d log x. So what's the interpretation of that elasticity? Well, Imagine that um, x changes by 1%. So imagine that x, the argument to the function, increases by 1%. What we are trying to see is what happens to f. And what happens to f is going to be given by the elasticity. So if x increases by 1%, dx, the change in x is going to be equal to 1% times x. Okay, because x increases by 1%, so the change is just 1% of x. So now, according to this, what is going to be the change in f? So then df, we know that it's f prime of x. Uh, 
dx. Okay, so um, the f is going to be f prime of x times x times one percent. Okay, so that's my change in f. Right. But now, um, in the same way that I express my change in x yeah, as a relative change, so I said x was changing by one percent. Let's say I want to express my change in f in a relative way as well. So I want to know how much, what is the of the percentage change in F. That percentage change in F, it's DF relative to F. So we are going to say uh, what is the change in F relative to the value of, of F so that we have a percentage uh, change. And furthermore, so this is just going to give us a relative change if I want to express it in percent. Um, I have to multiply this uh, right. I'll have to um, multiply this by 100. So if something changes by uh, you know by uh, 0 0.01 because I want to express this in percent and I want to get one percent, I need to multiply this by 100. So df over f times 100, that's going to give us a percentage change in f. So now using what I've just said, that's going to be equal to f prime of x times x over f times 1 percent times 100. Okay? Um, now, 100 and 1 percent, that's one they uh, clear out. So what we have, so now we find that the percentage change in f, it's equal to x over f times f prime of x, so it's equal to x over f df dx. Okay, so this is our percentage change in f. Right, but now what do we have? Um, so we said earlier we have this key result that we have here, so this is just really important. By definition, a change in a function df is f prime of x dx. So what that means is that d log f, which is, uh, you know, you can if you take the log of uh, the value f, it's going to be equal to, so here log is our function, so the derivative of log of x is 1 over x, so this is going to be equal to 1 over f df, where this 1 over f here, this is the derivative of log, right? So d log of f is 1, is 1 over f df, okay, and similarly, d log of x. So we know when we have a function f, d, d f of x is f prime of x dx. So here the function f is log. So f prime of, of x when f is log is 1 over x. So this is going to be equal to 1 over x dx as well, exactly as previously. Okay. So what we learn from this is that d log f d log x is just going to be equal to x over f df dx, right? And this is, in fact, a result that's also super useful that you know we use all the time that links uh, elasticities to uh, just regular derivative. You know, an elasticity is just for a function f with respect to x, it's just x over f times the derivative of f with respect to x. Um, so anyway, using this result that, that is very uh, super common, this is just the same as saying that d log f d log x is x over f times f prime of x. Again, another super useful result. Um, so that we can uh, plug that here above. 
so what do we get? We get that the percentage change in F is given by d log f d log x, which is just the elasticity of f with respect to x. Okay. Um, just if we if we just um, if we just use this this result here, that the percentage change in f was f prime of x x over f. Okay, so the elasticity is going to give us the percentage change in a function f when the argument changes by 1%. So that's very important to know and to understand like how we get to that. Okay. All right, so now what we can do, so we, we let me, um, so here we've introduced uh, the definition of an elasticity, we've introduced the interpretation of an elasticity. Okay, and now let's uh, look at a bunch of uh, results about elasticity that we're going to use a lot. Okay, uh, so what are the useful results? Well, so we've seen uh, we've seen some that we've used without mentioning it, but you know, let's uh, let's summarize them and let's derive them. So let's imagine that you have a function f of x that's a power function, so that's given by x alpha. What is the elasticity in that case? The elasticity of f with respect to x is just going to be equal to alpha. Okay, so if you have a power function, the elasticity is uh, constant. Well, how do we know that? Well, that's very that's very easy. If f of x if f of x is x alpha, log of f is equal to alpha log of x, um, and then of course. Um, you know, in that case, you know, it's as if log of f was a function of log of x, a linear function of log of x. So if log of f is alpha log of x, then you have immediately that d log of x with respect to d log of x is going to be equal to alpha, right? And you can consider log of x to be the argument. Log of f, log of f is your function. If you take the derivative, you get alpha. So that's just immediate, okay? So that's an important result that we use all the time. If we have an isoelastic power function like this, uh, the elasticity is just a constant. Okay. Important result as well uh, that we use all of the time. So imagine that you have a function f of x, and it's the product of two other functions, a of x times b of x then the elasticity of our function oops, f with respect to x it's going to be the elasticity of a with respect to x plus the elasticity of the function b with respect to x so when you have a product you can just use uh, you can just add the elasticities again important result here. How do we prove that? Very simple, using the properties of log. Um, so if f is equal to a times b, log of x is log of a plus log of b. And therefore, you know, given that um, derivatives, derivative of the sum of two functions is just the sum of the derivative here, I'm allowed to take the derivative of this, and so I have that d log f d log x is just equal to d log a d log x plus d log b uh, d log x um, 
and hence uh, my results using the definitions of elasticities. Okay, well, I'll just take the derivative of uh, this, uh, you know, the both sides of the equation with respect to uh, log x, which I'm always allowed to do. Okay. All right, so we have um, power functions, we have products of two functions, but also the ratio of two functions. Same thing, classic result with elasticities. Uh, so if f of x is equal to a of x divided by b of x, then the elasticity of f with respect to x, it's going to be the elasticity of a with respect to x minus the elasticity of b with respect to x. Okay. Um, and the proof follows uh, once more directly from the properties of um, log. Right, so if f of x is a of x divided by b of x, log of f is equal to log of a minus log of b. And then, you know, these are just two functions, uh, three functions uh, that are related as such, and then you can just take that derivative with respect to log of x, given that um, we know that when we have derivatives, the derivative of a difference is just the difference of the derivative, so then we get d log f d log x, is going to be equal to d log a d log x minus d log b d log x and that's our result for the um, elasticities. Okay, um, so we've seen uh, we've seen that. What about so another result that's uh, very useful? What about if a function f of x is equal to alpha times a function a of x, where alpha is just some scalar. Then it turns out that the elasticity of f with respect to x is just equal to the elasticity of a with respect to f. So two, two functions that are uh, you know, equal to each other but up to a scaling parameter, they always have the same elasticity. <clears throat> okay, um, so if we take two functions and uh, right and they have a constant ratio between each other, then you have the same elasticity. The proof once more relies on properties of log. So if f of x is alpha times a of x, log of f is equal to log of alpha plus log of a. Then, once more, I'm allowed to take the derivative on both sides of this equation. So then I have d log of x, d, d log of f, d log of x is equal to d log alpha, d log f plus d log a, d log x. This is just the, uh, this one is just the elasticity of f with respect to x. This one is just the elasticity of a with respect to x. And now, because alpha is just a scalar, the elasticity of alpha with respect to x is just zero because alpha is a constant. And then we get uh, we get our result. Okay. So once more, that's uh, that's going to be uh, quite useful. So last result that's very useful is what is the elasticity when we look at sums of functions. So now imagine that f of x is equal to a of x plus b of x. Uh, what is the elasticity here? And what we can show is that the elasticity of... So here we are looking at the elasticity of a sum of functions. It turns out that the elasticity of a sum of functions is a weighted sum of the elasticities. 
Okay, so the elasticity of f with respect to x is going to be a over a plus b times the elasticity of a with respect to x plus b over a plus b times the elasticity of b with respect to x, okay, which is uh, another very important result that's more easily forgotten but very critical. So this is just saying that the elasticity of a sum is a weighted sum of the elasticities. Okay, um, key value. And how do we show that? Well, again, we'll have to use the um, properties of log. So if f is equal to uh, x plus bx, so how do we get do it? So we have that log of f is equal to log of a plus b, and here I can't do anything, you know, it's not a product, so there's no easy way uh, to go about that. Um, so now, you know, I could say like, what is now, if I, let's say I'm just going to um, take the, uh, the derivative of this with respect to um, log of x, so I get that d log of x d log of f d log x is equal to um, so here I have log of a plus b so this is I can use a chain rule so um, log of a plus b the derivative uh, is going to be 1 over a plus b times if I use chain rule so first I take the derivative of log that's 1 over a plus b and then I take the derivative of what's inside so I will get d a d log of x plus d b d log of x. Okay, so here I'm just because I'm taking the derivative of this with respect to log of x. Okay, um, okay, so that's that's good. Now what I can do is I can, I can uh, expand this. So I get one over a plus b d a d log of x plus where log of x. Like just uh, the argument that I use to take derivative plus 1 over a plus b d b d log of x. Okay, then what I can do here, I can multiply this by a and also divide it by a and I can multiply this by b and divide it by b. Okay, this has no change, this doesn't change anything. Okay. But what have we seen? Uh, what have we seen earlier? We've seen that d log of a for you know any a any is going to be equal to d a over a. And similarly, we've seen that d log of b is just d b over b. Now using that these two results, I can just rewrite what I have here above, so I can rewrite my d log of f, d log of x, I can write it as a over a plus b, d log of a, d log of x, plus b over a plus b, d log of b, d log of x, and then I have my result on of the elasticity because here I just have my elasticity of A, here I have the elasticity of F, and here I have the elasticity of the function B, and then we have uh, we have our proof. Now if we just showed that the elasticity of the sum is a weighted sum of the elasticities, and, and with that we are armed you know, to um, compute the elasticity of tightness with respect to productivity in our model, and that completes our little uh, our little um, exploration of elasticity results that we use as a kind of preliminary to get everything else.